Hello, uh, I thought I'd answer your question by using the software you were having problems with rather than just assuming it worked uh, a completely wrong way. Always helps, doesn't it? Um, okay, so I've gone and downloaded the free demo of Midinus. I think it works exactly the same as the full version. I just, I don't think I can load uh, projects. Now, my first assumption with Midinus was that it was a, like a VSTi uh, virtual instrument, um, like as I mentioned in a in my previous post, like X for Cthulhu, which is uh, kind of like a arpeggiator, and it will take MIDI information uh, and then do stuff to it and then spit out more MIDI, more MIDI information, and that's not how Midinus works at all. Uh, it's a completely standalone application that creates a virtual MIDI port. So the the question really that you're asking is, how can we connect that virtual MIDI port and how can we record the MIDI information that's being sent from Midinus into that port? Okay, so step one, start Midinus. Step two, start Acid. Okay, you need to do it in that order, I think. I don't think Acid can re-detect uh, MIDI uh, ports and devices after it's started up. Uh, once you've started Midinus and started Acid, come into the Acid Preferences, into the MIDI tab, and you will see, at the very least, you will see Midinus port here in the bottom. It will be unticked by default, so you'll need to tick that. Um, there is an option in Midinus to send the MIDI clock. Uh, if you've got that enabled when you start Acid, you will see a Midinus clock port. Now, I couldn't get syncing working between Midinus and Acid. So um, uh, I'm not I'm not very I'm not an expert when it comes to MIDI syncing and stuff like that. So maybe uh, somebody else in the comments section can explain uh, how to get that working. But uh, I've certainly tried. I come into the sync settings and select selected the Midinus clock port, uh, and I've come into um, options and enabled real-time editing, sorry, real-time MIDI, but uh, no joy. But that's not a problem. We can work around that. So we have Midinus, we have Acid uh, open and we've enabled the MIDI device. The next thing we're going to need to do is enable or create rather some content in Midinus that we want to record. And I've created an awful little loop. That sounds like that. Okay, we don't we're not gonna use the internal synth. Now when we hit play, we don't hear anything. But it is sending MIDI information into acid. So in acid we will create a MIDI track. Let's delete that That's from our previous video. Uh, insert MIDI track. And we'll see we get a MIDI track and if you enable uh, show bus tracks, you'll see that we have a corresponding MIDI bus. Okay. Now I'm just going to very quickly explain MIDI routing in Acid, uh, just because it helps, I think. So in Acid, we have MIDI clips which contain MIDI information, so notes, velocity, modulation, those kind of things. Um, and MIDI clips sit on a MIDI track. And MIDI tracks basically take that MIDI information and they send it somewhere. Um, and you can uh, edit some of like envelopes and some other settings within, uh, like over the top of all of those MIDI clips if you want. But essentially it's taking the MIDI clip information and spitting it out into the output. By default, when you set up a new MIDI track, uh, as I say, we get a, a corresponding MIDI bus. And a MIDI bus is like an audio bus within ACID, uh, except it has a virtual synth at the very start of the chain. And the virtual synth takes that MIDI input, or the MIDI output from the MIDI track, it takes its input into the, the virtual synth, the synth does its thing, and then it outputs audio. Right, so if you want to add like EQ or echoes or reverbs or anything like that, 
you can add those onto your track effects on the MIDI on the MIDI bus. Okay. Um, so what we're doing here on our MIDI track, we're not actually going to use a MIDI clip. The other way of getting MIDI information into a soft synth is to set a, an alternate input for the MIDI track. Now, by default, when you've got a minimized track, the way you set the input is this icon here, which looks a little bit like an alarm clock, but it's a MIDI cable or MIDI port. If, it's ex if your track is extended, it's here. Or you can right click on the track and select input. Okay, so what we're going to do is so we're going to come into here, select uh, the midiness port for our input. And now when we hit play in midiness, we should hear something in acid. We do. Okay, so this bar here, just to explain the UI, this bar here represents like the velocity of the MIDI notes. And this bar on the MIDI bus represents the audio level. Okay, so they don't get those two things confused. You could have a very high velocity MIDI note that produces a very quiet sound. Right, so the next step is we want to record that MIDI onto that MIDI track so that we can edit it or chop it up um, and not have to have midness open every time. I guess the, the, the unique selling point about midness is you can kind of get randomization with it uh, and um, play rhythms and those kind of things, which uh, might never repeat. So if you, you want to record the note information and then edit it and chop it up and find out like cool little nuggets of MIDI track. All right, so we're going to record that. And the way we do that is we first set this MIDI uh, track to be armed for record. And this is telling Acid that we're going to do some recording. We want that to be recorded uh, to that track. And then we're going to hit the record button on the transport controls at the bottom. When we hit record, we'll, st we'll see the playhead move across uh, the timeline. In this instance, I've actually got a, like a little loop region uh, selected. And uh, when we hit record, Acid is going to fill that up with a MIDI clip and then put information into it. So it's only going to record that amount of information. So we'll hit record. And we can see we can, the timeline's going across, but we don't have any MIDI information coming across yet. And that's because midiness isn't playing. So we hit record again, hit play midiness, and we can we can see that information being saved into that MIDI clip. Great. What next? Okay, so because we don't have that sync working, these notes aren't quantized and they start in a really awkward place. If we actually come into the clip properties, you can see they don't align to that grid at all, and that's a real shame. So if we click into the clip properties piano roll, do control A to select all the notes, hit this icon here to quantize. And we're going to do the start times. Maybe you, you want to do the note durations as well. I don't know. Uh, we'll do that. That's going to quantize them to the grid. And uh, I guess the other issue we have here is that this loop that I've set up is now not starting at the start of the clip. Um, I will link another video uh, on my channel that explains how to trim MIDI clips properly. I'm not sure whether properly is the cor correct word, but certainly I think there's three different ways you can clip, uh, trim your clips. Okay, hopefully that has answered your question. It is a confusing, Midiness is a confusing application because there's no documentation at all. And looking at the web page, I also thought it would be a VSTI that you could uh, just use as a, you know, any other instrument. But sadly, it's not. It's a completely standalone MIDI application. Um, but it's still usable. So... Yeah, that's how you do it. Good luck.